a year ago at this time, you said that the success of your defense last season was going to depend a lot on how fast the new guys could grow up when you replaced your entire defensive line. When you look back, how'd they do in terms of all those guys stepping into new roles, filling the void of all the seniors you lost the year before? Well, yeah, I think it was a process. It took a while to come around. Uh, really going back and studying what happened last year from a film standpoint or an analytical standpoint, we played pretty well early and then you know, we, we were four or one and four there, and we didn't play well against uh, Rutgers in that game. And we kind of lost it a little bit, but then we picked it back up towards the end of the season. We were playing really good defense those last four or five games of the season. Uh, shoot that UCF game, uh, you know, even the Houston game. We held Houston probably their least offensive total in the whole of the whole year. And, uh, you know, UCF. Uh, or not UCF, but USF, we had those guys shut out. We give up a punt return to, to them out. So, you know, I thought it was a t we kind of lost our confidence a little bit when we went one and four there, and then we had to build it back up as coaches, and we played well the last part of the season. But where these kids are at right now compared to where we're at last year is night and day. How so? What's the difference? Uh, just confidence. They know what they're doing. They're confident in what they're doing. They've got a little bit of swag to them right now. Um, you know, a little pride in what they're doing. So I'm happy where we're at with that front seven right now. Well, obviously, you got to replace guys every year after graduation. One of them you have to replace this year is Randall Joyner. Led the team in tackles, but he was also sort of the, the vocal leader. Um, who fills that role, or do you need that role filled, a loud, vocal player encouraging teammates all the time? Well, you always need leadership, and when the players take ownership of the defense, that's when you know you're going to have a good defense. And uh, there's several kids taking over that leadership role on that defense. Uh, I see Shaquille being a leader out there, uh, Shaquille Randall. Linebacker-wise, uh, you know, Sanders doing a good job of leading out there. I think Darian Wright on the defensive line and uh, Zach Woods, those guys, those are the guys that are being our leaders out there right now. And, and as long as they uh, take over that leadership role and continue to do that, we'll be fine. In addition to all the freshmen who come in, you've got two new transfer linebackers. Uh, Caleb Tuiasasopo and Cameron Nwosu. On paper, they look pretty similar. They're both strong inside guys. They're both a little older, obviously, with some experience. You study them a whole lot more than that, though. Are there major differences that you see between the two of them? Um, not really. I mean, they're pretty similar. Uh, the thing I'm impressed with with Tui is I told him he needed to lose weight. I think he was 255 in spring. Came in at about 230, 235 right now, and he's moving so much better. Uh, we thought he was really instinctual when he was in junior college, and you see that out there now, only he's moving a lot better. Uh, Cameron, you know, we thought he was a great player for Rice. Um, watched him on film, watched a lot of games. Uh, I think he had 18 tackles in the Texas game. And, you know, you can see that there. You got to be patient with those kids, though. It takes a while to get into the system, learn what to do. Uh, but you can see both those kids are, are going to be players for us. It's just a matter of, you know, what game do they end up being the player. So it, I, I like both of them right now. Last year you had, to put, you had a brand new starting defensive line. This year you're replacing three of your four starters in the secondary. Is it easier to replace on one end of the defense than the other? No, and secondary is probably the hardest thing, and that's going to be a real big point of emphasis. Uh, I don't like where we're at pass uh, coverage-wise. Uh, you know, we're in the national rankings. We're not even close to where I want to be. Um, you know, the thing that I like about secondary is we've got guys with experience back there, almost at all, every spot. Uh, I like uh, Horace Richardson. I think he's playing really well at corner. I got an interception today. He's a big-time athlete. This isn't the first time he's been in. Uh, you know, we got a three-way battle in the, at that safety position. I don't know who's going to start there. But you got guys that are legit players, uh, Shaquille Randolph, Greenbauer, and then uh, and then uh, Darian Richardson. Richardson played a lot last year, got some interceptions. Uh, the other corner spot, uh, when JR comes back, he'll give us some depth there. Uh, Ajay's there right now. We don't have a lot of depth at corner. That would be the one spot if we got an injury that would be very concerning to me. At the end of the last season, you said that down the final stretch, Jonathan Yenga might have been your best defensive player. What was he doing that made you say that about him, and what are your expectations for him this year? Well, his production went way up. Uh, you go back and look at the film, and he didn't play much in the first three ball games, and then all of a sudden, light came on. I think it was more the TCU game where he really became a player, and that's what you look for in young players. All of a sudden, we call it the light comes on for him, but 
it all just kind of fits for them, and, and then they become the player that you think they're going to become. Uh, I expect him to be, again, one of our top players, if not our top player on defense. He can run, he can hit. He led us in sacks last year. I think it was third and tackle, something like that. And uh, he's a special player when he's got it all together. And, you know, from about the TCU game last year on, he had it together. Is Bo Barnes a full-time linebacker now, or is he going to flip-flop back and forth between that and DN? Ah, that's yet to be seen. Uh, I like the things I'm seeing out of him. I'm a little disappointed that he dropped a lot of weight in uh, the offseason. He thought he needed to weigh 235, 240. I'm trying to get him back up to 250, 255. But, uh, you know, he, he moves well, and he's got the skills that you can play outside backer. But, you know, we wanted to be a dual guy where he can play coverage and rush. And, you know, there may be some packages where we drop him down as a fourth lineman. And, uh, you know, you're not going to do that 235. I mean, Seals is 245 and Sanders is 260. So he's got to get his weight back up. If he's at linebacker, is Zelt Minor your starting defensive end? Yeah, no question. Uh, you yeah, talked I, I last year about what a great athlete Zelt is and how much potential he has. How much improvement have you seen from him over the offseason? Well, you know what you see is you see maturity. They know what to do in the system. He knows what to do in the system. Uh, he's kind of taken ownership of being a, a guy that's going to receive a lot of playing time uh, and a starter, uh, where when you come in as a freshman, you're just in survival mode. And, uh, you know, we saw it on him early. I thought he played well late in the year. Uh, I think he could be one of the better defensive ends in the conference if he keeps maturing and, and doing the things that he's coached to do. You've talked over the last year or two about all these defensive ends that you've been collecting behind your starters. Zelt Miner, Ely Nabushosi, Cameron Smith, uh, Mason Gentry, Justin Lawler. With that kind of depth, well, first of all, how are, they, how are those backups coming along, and will that allow you to rotate more? or? Are you still going to rely heavily on your starters? Nah, that's going to allow us to rotate more. I mean, we're talking about two and maybe three deep in the rotation. Uh, you know, I said when we first took this over that we'd want to build this thing with defensive linemen and uh, corners. It hadn't really turned out to be the corner situation so much as the D-line. We've got the D-line set. We've got to get better corners. But that situation, it'll resolve itself. But we're thinking a lot more rotation, possibly three deep in the rotation. And, and, uh, you know, you like what you see there. Mason Gentry's really growing up a lot from uh, freshman year to now. I think he benched over 400 in the preseason uh, lifting. And, uh, he's where we thought he would be. I, I look at him and I look at a kid that he reminds me a lot of Taylor Thompson when he was a young player. Uh, but we got to give him some reps. We got to see it where he's battle tested. I know it's really early in camp, but where do you see the best position battle? Uh, I think you've got it with defensive ends and then that safety spot. And then I think the buck linebacker <laughs> spot's going to be a heck of a battle between uh, Horton and uh, uh, Bordano. Uh, Cameron's in in that battle. Uh, Tui's in in there. There's four guys that can play that spot. That should be a heck of a battle. So I really think it's in our safeties, our defensive ends, and that buck linebacker. What's it like being a defensive coordinator and opening up against a team that scored 52 points a game last year? Are you getting any sleep at all? Well, you know, it's Baylor, and I think Art Biles does the best job of any coach in the country offensively, and uh, it is what it is. I mean, people don't want me to say that, but that's a great offense. We're going to have to play our best game. And, you know, and realistically, can we hold them to uh, 14 points? No. I mean, that's not realistic. It's going to be a heck of a game. we got to make plays. we got to create turnovers. I don't know how that game's going to unfold, but, uh, hey, we're going to go down and play it. I look forward to it. I think it's a great opportunity to play the defending Big 12 champs at home we'll open a new stadium. That, that's fun to me. UCF, UCF beat them in their bowl game, and you certainly hung with UCF. Do you point to that game as evidence to show your team, look, you can hang with them? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I think we can play with them. Uh, I'm not intimidated at all with them athlete on athlete, but uh, yeah, you look at UCF, we, we all lead UCF to 16 points, you know, and they go down and beat them. So yeah, college football, there's so much parity. Anybody can beat anybody on any given day. You just have to have the kids ready to play, and that's the challenge you got as a coach.